So, Yanis is joining us today after five years in coffee, correct, Randfor, and is going to be discussing with us the searching for opportunities uh, within the coffee. So, um, my name is Yanis, and uh, it's super exciting to be here today. And it's actually my third time at camp, and first time as a speaker, which is pretty nerve-wracking, to be honest. But I think it's a it's a great opportunity, and um, it's a, a big honor for myself as well. And in my path as a coffee professional, I think it's a it's it's going to be one of the memories to remember. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Before I start introducing and talking a lot about myself. I would like you guys to raise your hand. Who has the first barista camp? Okay. So there's quite a bit of you, and uh, and that's great because I remember my first barista camp, and it was the first ever barista camp, which was great. And I kind of really feel that um, that left a lot with me coming here today and what I'm going to talk about. So it's really nice to to see you guys here and welcome. And I hope you're really enjoying the camp and learning a lot of new things about coffee and about how to be better coffee professionals. So yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to talk about a topic that has been with me for five years since I'm in coffee, but it's been with me for, I would say, about almost 10 years. Because before I was in coffee, I was um, doing a lot of sports. And my background in sports, I, I used to play a lot of rugby. And that was the love of my life for a very, very long time. 12 years to be exactly. And that ended quite sad because I had the opportunity to, to become something at that sport, but I didn't actually uh, really use it because, because of lack of preparation and because being an amateur and I ended up injuring myself very badly at the age of 19. And, um, but the upside is that, that I met coffee and it's been working out pretty well. And then the lesson from that why am I talking about opportunities is that you have them, everybody has the opportunities and we just need to learn, never let the opportunity go away and how to use them correctly. So as, as I got introduced, my name is Yanis and I've been working in coffee for the fifth year now. So it has been a very exciting and seems to be a very long journey, but uh, actually it's only at the beginning. and. Uh, Currently, I am the barista and sous chef at the Coffee Collective, and um, that's a new chapter in my life. So I've been living in Copenhagen for about two months now. So, yeah, but I'm gonna get to that a bit later. And I'm also the last year's Latvian barista and this year's Latvian cup tastings champion. So I've been really privileged to being able to win these competitions and represent my country in the world championships. But believe under these two, these are the only two that I succeeded in. So there's a very a lot of them that I didn't and got disqualified and came last. But we're not going to talk about those today. Um, yeah, in that picture I won. I almost won another one, but I lost by one point, but it was okay. So moving on. And uh, so where it all started for me, so I'm from Riga. In, uh, this is in Latvia, a very small country in the Baltic states. Whoever was in camp last year, it's uh, the neighboring country of Estonia. So we have about two million people living in the country, which is very, very small and not a lot. And then you can only imagine how many coffee professionals we have in the country. And it's not a lot, but we have some really great people in coffee. Some of them I see here today, which is really nice. And yeah, so I started working in coffee here in Riga, which is my hometown, and that was about about four and a half years ago. So I started working in a coffee shop called Meat, and it was a really great experience because that was the only coffee shop in the town. So it was it was great. So, but over the years, I've I've heard a lot of speeches, a lot a lot of people talking about coffee and how they got into coffee, and then they all have this moment, what they say, that they tasted this amazing coffee, they tasted this, um, usually it's a natural Ethiopian coffee that they tasted and they got their minds blown and then they decided I want to quit my job and, and do coffee for a living. So leading up to this talk I was thinking about this and I was disappointed 
because I don't have a coffee moment to share with coffee, but I have a coffee moment to share, which is at these times, it's maybe not really appropriate, but it's still really close to my heart, and it's this. So four and a half years ago, I, I bought this book, and I read it, and it was the most amazing thing I ever read. And it was the first coffee book that I ever read, written by James Freeman, the, was it now, co-owner of Blue Bottle? But, um, so this book really inspired me because there was everything from the origin to the, to the barista, everything about processing farming, how they buy their coffee and roasting, brewing equipment, everything that you can really imagine there. So this really opened up my mind for coffee and I really wanted to explore everything. And that's why I'm talking about opportunities today because this was one of my opportunities that I saw that this could help me to uh, go somewhere in coffee. So um, fast forward, I was still working in Riga, still in the same shop and uh, trying to know everything I can about coffee, brewing coffee and different kind of filter coffees, espressos, everything you can imagine. And at some point, I really got bored. I, I have to be honest, I got into a routine. I was doing the same everything, everything the same every single day. And I got really bored with myself and I wanted to change. I didn't want to leave coffee because I realized that that's the thing that I want to do for maybe the rest of my life. So I really needed, needed a change, and I knew that I have to look for something that will uh, bring me back to the right path. So and then I have a quote here, and it says, a time or set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So this is actually what opportunity means. So, and this really resonated with uh, what I was thinking at that time, because I was really searching for something in something that I didn't really know what to do. And, um, yeah, I, I, was, I was searching for the opportunity. And one of the big changes that I had was um, going abroad. So first I started about traveling around Europe in my days off or vacations, if you can call them like that. And um, yeah, I went to cities like London, Berlin, Oslo, and um, looked at the coffee scenes there. And I saw this big buzz of coffee shops. I saw this energy. I saw drinks being made, delicious coffees. So all of the times that I went away, I brought something back with me, which was the coffee. And I shared it with my colleagues. I shared it with the, the local community or our customers that came in. And it was great. But again came a time that I, I really started to feel that I need a big change in my life. And that happened in 2014 when I decided to volunteer. And I volunteered in the world of coffee in Rimini. As a barista, I did not know what I was doing. Uh, they asked me, the biggest memory from the, from the event was, they asked me to dial in a coffee, and I didn't know how to do it. So I asked, um, and, and they put me as a lead barista, which was great, but I didn't know how to dial in a coffee. So it was, but nobody knew this, so this is the first time I ever I, I tell some, somebody about this, so. Um, I'm sorry, whoever was drinking that coffee, but. But yeah, and um, after that, I really saw the community gathering for the first time, and I was amazed about the competition and about all the different companies, and I've met some of really great friends there, and uh, we still keep in contact, which is great. And yeah, that kind of opened the idea that I, have to, that I have to leave my home, and I have to go somewhere because um, the coffee scene obviously was very small, so I had to go away to explore, to learn, and to become a better barista. And yeah, so then I had an opportunity to apply for a job in Berlin. So um, there's a coffee roastery called Five Elephant. Uh, some of you guys have tasted the coffee here in camp. I hope you like it because it's a great coffee company. They have really amazing coffee and amazing people. So this was an interesting journey because they were looking for a roaster. And at that time, I thought that being a coffee roaster is like the rock star. That's like the best that you can do, and I really wanted to do that. So they were looking for somebody, and I decided to apply. And the application was really interesting because they were um, looking for somebody to come down for a week, work for free, 
in the roastery doing heavy lifting for a week, Monday to Friday, from 6 a.m. to about 5, long days. But I was really ready to do it. And, um, but it was first come, first serve basis. So they would say yes or no on a Friday. So, and I was lucky to be the third person, and nobody got accepted before me. So I went to Berlin. I did a week in the roastery. Came Friday, and guess what? I didn't get the job. But um, I didn't get the job because I think they chose already somebody else before, but they just didn't have the decision right there. But they told me something that was really important that I realized just recently that they said, like, we have an opening in our shop, and we would love to see you there. And that was something that was with me, uh, being the barista and uh, just having, having that opportunity. So I went home, quit my job, um, and a month later I was in Berlin, a different city. I didn't have a place to live. I moved with my girlfriend, so we were living in a small room. We do not speak German. I speak a bit now, but, and yeah, it was really scary. And, uh, but over time, I started working the shop and, and everything kind of turned out great. But the first month was the worst because I was washing dishes. And I came from making six coffees an hour to 10, no, 60 coffees an hour. So it was a big change and I got some barista shifts on the bar. But after the first month, I was really angry. I was disappointed and I thought that this is really bad because I was washing dishes for the whole month. And I didn't get some, so, many, so much time on the machine that I wanted to. But over time, I really realized that you have to learn every single thing there is about the company and every single position. So over time, I realized that if I will become best at doing dishes, I can surely move on and eventually be behind the machine and making the coffees. And these days, if you ask me, I would rather do the dishes than making coffee on a Sunday. But I've kind of come a long way there. So fast forward, we. I realized this very early that, that coffee is something more than just barista skills, just making coffee. So, and that kind of stuck with me, the idea. So opportunities came and I did a lot of jobs inside the company. I did the barista job. I did some packing jobs in the roastery. I did a bit of wholesale managing, which is, I still, I would never probably do it because it's just not my field. And uh, I did some training for our baristas and our wholesale customers. So, but I never did these things in a way that I wanna pursue a career, career in this. I still wanted to be a barista, but I wanted to learn. And I had the opportunity to do this. So I just gave it a shot and did that for a, for a while. I was more kind of covering for people than actually doing it, but I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot of experience. And, um, but eventually I ended up having this dilemma with myself because the shop that I worked in needed a manager. And they were looking at everybody else but me. And I really didn't understand why. Because I was doing a really good job. I was always on time. I was always doing everything that I could. But there's some things that I think it's a, it's a thing that where I come from, and mentality thing, that I'm pretty shy as a person. And there were some things that I just didn't understand. Uh, but I learned them afterwards, and after several times they were looking desperately for a manager somewhere else, I was kind of sick of it, and I went to them, I want to be a manager. So there's the one thing that I, that I learned in the Middle East see there, so be clear about what you want. And I really learned this the hard way because it was only at that point that they said, oh, we never really thought that you wanted to do this. So, and a lot of people have have made this mistake and thinking that I want to do this, but you never tell anyone. So nobody really you know, thinks the way you do. So maybe they don't know what you want to do. And also big, big things that I took from, from working in Berlin for over two years is that learning happens everywhere. And when you go, first times I went home, I was kind of sad and disappointed because I thought I haven't learned anything. I haven't done like enough training. I haven't, I've just worked on bar and done barista shifts. But as soon as I went back home, I realized how much I've actually learned, how much faster I am on coffee, how much better I can speak in, uh, about the coffee. So that was a big plus, and I realized that only when I actually went home and talked with my friends. And another big thing is that you don't have to be afraid of responsibilities. They're not really scary. 
there are more than uh, opportunities, more or less, because you're gonna, you're not alone. You're gonna have people that are gonna help you. You're gonna have, you, you have people to ask questions to and learn about the responsibilities they have to take. And I see those as new, new opportunities, opportunities to learn and develop. And uh, I think just do not be afraid ever to take responsibilities. If it's something that you don't wanna do, don't do it. But if you're thinking about it and you're shy, just try it. Worst case scenario, you're gonna be fired, so it's fine. So moving on, and this is kind of very close. So this is, mm, I would call this me five years ago. So I knew the name Barista. I knew nothing really else about what Barista is. So then I went to the first Barista camp, and I had this background from the book that I read, and I thought that the Barista means this. So that it's all about the coffee. It's all about brewing the perfect cup of coffee, brewing, um, you know, the, the best extraction that there is, if there is such a thing, and uh, knowing all the difficult words in coffee. And over time I realized working those two years in Berlin that it's actually a bit more than that. And uh, when I became manager, I thought that we really need to step up what we know about not only coffee, but the whole hospitality industry in general. So then these days, uh, what I think of a barista looks more like this. So you see coffee skills are still there, they're still important, and they are the basis of everything that we do because we want to we wanna make coffee and want to share experiences. But there's also so many things that we can, we can do outside of coffee that can bring new opportunities to us. And uh, yeah, there's things like communication skills, which is very important because we have people drinking the coffee every day. So if we don't communicate with them in the right way, they're probably not gonna come back and drink coffee. And a lot of different things, attention to detail. We have to be fast and efficient and clean as baristas. And time management, we have to be on time to work. We have to um, do all of these things and, and solve problems on a daily basis. So if everybody works behind the bar, you know what problems behind the bar could be. So you have to act fast because you have a line out the door and you have to do a lot of things in general. And I think most of all, you have to have a motivation to learn, to learn new skills and learn something of this because it's gonna benefit you in the, in the later life. And I think coming out all of, from this is that coffee is for people and we serve coffee to people every day. If we work behind the bar, if we, if we are here in the camp, um, and what's the point of serving coffee if we don't have any people to serve it for? So if you have a shop and nobody's coming to your shop, or if we're serving coffee to each other or drinking the coffee on our own, then I think that is a big, big mistake. So I think the, the more we can serve coffee for people, which includes not only making the coffee, it means serving it, preparing it, and presenting it in the right way, I think that that's what it all should be about because if we will not have people, we'll not have coffee, I guess. So, yeah, and then if we move on to a bit of um, progression in the industry, I would like to call this. I've seen this a couple of times before. A lot of people talk about progression in the industry and they've pulled out this kind of like pyramid structure. So you see there's a wide bottom and a, and a very big top. So. At the bottom, it's the, it's the baristas, it's the waiters, it's the dishwashers, and it's the kind of the entry level positions that we are in. And this is very easy to get in and do a good job, but then as time goes on and we want to progress in the industry, it gets a bit harder than that. So there's not unlimited amounts of head barista roles, there's not unlimited amount of manager roles, there's not uh, you know, enough roasters uh, roaster roles, so it narrows down and then at the end I've seen, if you see in the middle part, I've seen a lot of people disappear in that part. I've seen a lot of people that were great in coffee and they, they had big plans. I've seen national champions in coffee disappear and finish their careers in coffee in this part because they kind of got stuck. So there is, in my mind, there's a way how to not, not to get stuck in this is if if we think a bit differently. 
So what I would do, I would take this and turn it upside down. So, and now what we have is that you're at the very bottom tip and you have a very wide, wide open at the end. And I would, I really believe that this is the way to think. This is gonna really, this really opens your mind if you put it together with the, all the, all the barista skills or all the, the, the barista skills that I showed before. This really opens up your mind a bit. And if you see things that way, that you're at the very start, if the opportunity is the moment when you start actually working, because a lot of people think that I have to work to get this job, and then I get there and then I stop. But actually, it only starts all over again and we have to learn so much more. And then if we start here, we have so many things to learn and develop. And then at that point, who knows where we can go. We can, I would say we can do whatever we desire. We just have to keep an open mind and really learn and uh, yeah, be open about it and develop yourselves, not only in coffee, but also outside of coffee. And yeah, so then we move on. So I was living in Berlin for about two years and I had the same feeling again. I had the feeling that I've been a manager for about a year and a half. I've been working in a very strong team and I really enjoyed my work, but I had the feeling that I am not at the top, but I'm closing in on somewhere that I need to have a change again, like I did before when I, need to, when I decided to move on and move to a different country. I had the same feeling again. And I gave it a, a, a long thought and it took me several months. And uh, I realized that I have to move away again. So, but I was looking for something better, something that would more suit me. And I was looking for a city this time to live in. And uh, luckily I visited Copenhagen uh, last year. And I really liked it, but at that point, I didn't want to really move there. And not until I actually saw that the coffee collective is looking for people. And that what basically set it off for me, that I knew that I have to take this opportunity, don't succeed or succeed, but I have to, I will not forgive myself if I don't, if I don't take it. So I sent a application to Michaela and um, and it took a while. No, it was okay. I had to send just one more email. But um, I had kind of bigger plans. I wanted to move to a place that is really suited for me. So we started talking and, and um, we met up in person in Budapest. And I think she asked me a question that kind of stayed with me. It's been like the, the question I've been thinking for so, so very long. And uh, she asked me this. So, we were talking and she would said that everything looks really good and, I, and we would really love to, to have you here, but are you ready to step down? Because I was working as a manager and had a lot of experience, and, um, but I would be moving to a different city, to a new company. And I told her that I'm completely fine with that because that's actually what I want to do. I want to go back to the barista position and learn more because I have all of this experience now, but I'm nowhere near to knowing it all. So I wanted to um, start, let's say, start all over, but I wanted to expand my knowledge even more. So this was a really tough question to answer, but I kind of knew the answer already before she did. And yes, and that's basically how I, how I moved, to, moved to Copenhagen and started working at, at Coffee Collective as a barista. And I think my intentions are to become a barista, like remain a barista for a very, very long time. And I have other interests as well in my workplace, but uh, being behind the bar and working and serving the customers and doing all of those things that I showed in the barista screen is, is something that's very, very important to me. So I will probably keep on doing that and then we'll see where the opportunities lead us. And uh, yeah, so I moved to Copenhagen and this is where I live now. And uh, that's about it about Copenhagen. So, <laughs> I've been there two months, so there's still plenty of time. So this is something that I heard somewhere. I don't know who said it, but I think this really resonated with everything that I've, I've really thought about. And then it, it, it was left with me ever since. And, and 
there was, I think it was a, a restaurant owner that said that always raise your hand for opportunity, uh, not to demand, but to remind, remind you, remind the employers or whoever you're working about that you're interested. You want to take the next step. You want to be in that opportunity. And uh, I see that it's really working. I've seen a lot of people that has really benefited from this kind of communication. And I think if you demand something, it's never going to really work out so good. If we, if we talk about things in long term. So I think that the most important part is just to keep an open mind about what a barista can actually be and uh, learn as much as you can in, uh, in, the, in the classes, in the courses, but also be very open-minded and see what the customers and what the people that you work with actually inspire of or they want to do as well. So, yeah. So that's about it. Thank you. Give it up for Yanis Podinsch. All right, mate. Take a seat on the nice big sofa with me. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Oh, we've got our own microphones now. This is great. All right. So um, I think what's really interesting for, at least from the working group members that are here at the moment, is the, the, the barista career progression is something that we really try and focus on at least discussing and working out how that how that is going to manifest. And at the end of your presentation, you said that you really want to stay as a barista for now. And what, is, what does it mean to be a career barista? Is that something that we can achieve? I think definitely. I think that um, being a barista is, is, it doesn't mean you have to be only a barista. I think it's, for me, I've always thought that um, being a barista is, is, is the basis of what I do. And I will always go, I can always go back to that and I always have the skill. But I think being a barista is so much more that you can actually learn from. And I think it is a great career. I mean, I know about like the economic situations in different countries. I've, I've been, I've worked in three countries at the moment. So I know how it is to, to have different levels of, let's say, wage or financial situation. But I think that the barista role can be very fulfilling and I think you can gain a lot of it and uh, it makes you travel sooner or later you're gonna get you're gonna go somewhere because you are interested in what other people are doing so I think yeah and with the with the traveling aspect you said that you went to volunteer as your your first like, sort of main into that how did volunteering really change how you saw your progression in coffee I think the the time that I volunteered the first the first time was just that it um, it gave me kind of a community feel because I saw so much people at the same place that are doing the same exactly the same things as I did, and that was the first time that I really saw a competition uh, happening, and and it was the World Barista Championships, and it was really inspiring. So I think it kind of changed. It was the beginning of 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 me moving on from what I was doing and back home, and it kind of planted the seed to to be in, uh, be somewhere else and go explore some other things. Cool, and um, with with regards to uh, moving abroad, how long did it take you to really uh, decide going from Riga that it was really important for you to then change countries? Because obviously the scene was very small, but from a personal perspective, moving countries, it's a very, very big change and shift. Uh, how important was that to you to really decide like this is this is what I'm gonna do now? Well, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't really hard because I really, I wanted to move away. I was about to move away before I work, worked in coffee and I um, I wanted to explore Europe as a whole, like in general, to see other other experiences that there is. But I think the decision to move away was very easy for me because it was actually what I was waiting for, the opportunity, and it came in kind of the right moment. So it's not that it was easy to leave home it was it was pretty hard and and it's not difficult like easy to move to a different country just like that but um i think that for me it was pretty easy and i i knew what i was going to go for so and i had that's been always one of my main things when i move i i kind of need a job before i move so i i take care of that first and um, then I think that move is always easier. I've seen a lot of people just moving from country to country and then kind of searching something on the spot and that sometimes didn't really work out. So I think just kind of be prepared for the move and then, yeah, just kind of stay open-minded about it and uh, 
everything usually works out. Usually. Usually. Um, just a question on customers. So I think quite a few of the people in the audience will have worked in different countries. Can we raise hands to see how many people have moved around and changed? Yeah, so a fair few. And I think we'd all be pretty certain in saying that customers do vary uh, country to country and sort of that relationship. How have you found, who's been your best sort of customer base? Do you think it's an experience thing or do, you, do people really change from country to country, from barista to customer? Um, it actually does. And uh, I've experienced this. I'm still kind of exploring because I'm really new to Copenhagen. And uh, I think the, the biggest thing that I've realized is that um, people do change. And, and, and uh, living in Berlin is such a multicultural city. And you have a lot of foreign people, as in Copenhagen as well. But you have still a lot of like the local community. And what I've experienced in Copenhagen is that a lot of people like really acidic coffee. And but which is uh, funny, but it's I think you people are a b generally a bit open-minded about what they drink, and and they're more willing to listen to you rather than you know starting to to go away. So I think there's definitely a difference in between from place where you go from place to place. So I've I can't really say which is the best because all of the places have really nice things about the customers and about the interactions. But um, it is there is definitely a big change where you go because I've went from a place that coffee scene is barely happening to a place that you have very kind of mixed mixed uh, coffee scene in terms of quality and to a place that has a, again a very small coffee scene but it's kind of more secluded and 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 performing in a in a bit of more higher quality way. So right. cool. Um, I'm going to turn our questions to the audience now. Uh, is anybody wanting to start with some questions for Yanis? Oh, I got two at once. All right. Um, is it working? Yeah. Uh, I got two questions. First, about languages. How do you work as a barista in a foreign country not knowing the language, like now in Denmark? Yeah. Uh, do you just use English, and how do people react to that? Well, that is a thing that. Um, I've always discussed with the future employer, as I said, like I've always moved with already having a, a job. So it has been a big, big question in my mind always because I've, before I moved to Germany, I didn't really speak a word in German. And uh, that was a big kind of issue in my head, how it's going to be. But, um, and also now moving to Denmark. When I moved to Germany, I, I picked up German very, very quick. It takes you about a month to, uh, learn the, the the cafe language at least it it was in my case um first obviously you feel like very intimidated and very very shy but i i do listen a lot of what people say but also berlin is different because everybody speaks english and uh, but you have to be really careful with that because you can't demand them to speak english to you because you're the you're the outsider and but i think over time you can learn more and more I think over two years I was pretty comfortable in speaking German also outside, like at the post office or at the supermarket. But um, that is something definitely that, that I've always discussed with the employees, employers. Also in Denmark, that I, that was also one of my questions, what about Danish? Because I know that it's a less of an English community in, in Denmark. So, and uh, it kind of worked out, but I'm still, this time I'm going to learn the language very, uh, I'm going to go and, and learn it at a proper school. So, But it's always hard at the start. And there's always this, this moment when you say to the person that I'm sorry, I don't really speak English, and speak the language that you're speaking in, and then they don't understand from the first time. And then like, But it kind of always has worked out, but I think it depends on the place. If I would go somewhere in Germany else than Berlin, it would probably be a really big nightmare because... Um, yeah, it de it really depends on the place. So I think that would be the thing that I would really, if if a move like that is in the plan, I would that would be one of my questions. Is it possible to perform the duties, not speaking the language? It's a really important one, for sure. Yeah, the second and question. The second one in your uh, seizing opportunities and career paths, are you thinking of coming back to Latvia and you know giving to the coffee community there the knowledge you have yeah. gained abroad? Yeah. 
It's a very good question, which I've thought about very, very long. And um, the answer is yes, not right now. But um, I've, I've been thinking about, after the Budapest Championships, I've been thinking about the Latvian community a lot. And I've been talking with a lot of people about it and what, what is the, um, the, um, the experience that, that I could bring back to the local community. So it's definitely not in, not in plan in the next five years to move back home because uh, for me personally, I still really enjoy the traveling aspect and living somewhere else. But there is a plan of, of creating a platform or program to engage with local people back home and, and really engaging with the people that are living back home in charge of or like more known people in the industry to kind of create something that to bring it back because that's the big purpose of all of this is is not to for me I understood that I'm kind of really selfish in a way that I'm taking it all for myself and learning which is what I want to do but I actually have to bring something back as well so that's something for sure in the future that's gonna continue to uh, to come back home Any more? One at the back there. Uh, so um, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but I guess like in the industry, it's very easy to stagnate, uh, particularly as a barista or even as you start working up in the industry. And I guess like, is that something that you personally find difficult? Like you talk about making sure that you always have like a want or a desire to learn and is that something you find difficult, or do you have things that you use to keep yourself motivated, learning-wise? Like, do you set goals, or do you just any tips to do with that? Or well, it's a very good question. Um, I've one of the big things that always have kept me going is competition, and um, and uh, if you would, if I would look at my last two years, it's it's kind of always a, a constant preparation for something. And that has kind of kept me occupied for a very, very long time. And, and also in my mind to think about how to do things better or how to bring the things from, let's say, the competition scene t back to the bar. So actually thinking of, 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 uh, of different things, learning from, from other industries. So I, I've, I'm always sacrificing my time to, to learn something new. So because I, I, I've had these moments of, of that I feel that I'm stagnating. So I've always tried to occupy myself. And even if there is not an opportunity to like implement this in my workplace, I've always kind of, um, I'm learning it for, for the personal back and like the personal aspect. So I know it and then maybe sometimes it will come in handy in, in where I work and this kind of experience. So I think I'm sure it's not the best way to do it because I sacrifice a lot of time that I could have for myself but I think at the moment, at, at my age, it's for me, it's the only way to go, not to kind of lose myself somewhere in the middle. How old are you, Yanis? I am 24. Sweet. Just um, quickly before Drew does your question, sorry to inter interrupt there, mate. Um, one thing I think which is really interesting from the comment which was made about going back to Latvia, you said about taking the opportunities now, it's kind of this selfish thing. I think it's so interesting to think that like, you are, as a barista, incredibly rooted in the community you come from, if you come from such a small place, right? You actually you feel this kind of social responsibility to, to take back and bring that back to the community. I, kinda, I, I do, and I always think about it, and uh, I've been, I think it's because I was so involved, like, in a way, involved in part of the community before I left. And I kind of feel, because it's also like for me, it's heartbreaking to see people stop uh, making coffee. So I had this moment when all of my colleagues that I started in coffee with, they, they quit and they, they're not working in coffee anymore currently. So that was a big moment for me that I realized that, that there is a problem in somewhere in the, in back home. And if, if we see like championships with, um, with uh, 18 people in one year and four people the next year. So then that's a big change. So I kind of felt that there is a lot of good things that are have been done, but I think there's also a lot of things that I could implement and bring back, even if I'm not living at home currently, but I could still. So I have this pressure on myself that I really need to do something. So yeah, so I 
have this uh, feeling that I'm taking it everything for myself. But I don't also want to encourage people to leave their home. You know, it's a great experience, but I'm not saying that you have to. That's the only way. You don't have to leave home. It's just because I wanted to to experience more. Cool. All right. Thank you. Drew. Um, uh, <laughs> so I'm a system manager at the moment. So um, the most of the time now I've got to focus on kind of my manager, manager kind of stuff as well as my barista stuff. So I don't get that much time to kind of focus on the coffee. Yeah. Um, she said earlier about um, stepping down from that management role. Did you find that helped you develop as a barista? Because you, you forego that time? Yeah, I, I definitely think that. Um, and it's also these moments that uh, you don't know how it's going to turn out. And for me, it was very a very great experience in general. Just to go, go back from all of, having all of this responsibility and pressure on you and different tasks that were not uh, maybe necessarily related to coffee and going back to actually discovering the the barista role again and bringing some of that knowledge from the manager position or the way i think it's mo mostly the view how you see things you have uh, like i have new colleagues and and then we're all different people so i would and and we have a a manager that i work for now so it's very interesting to see other people's approaches and i think it, you benefit a lot from it because it's n what i what i actually forgot to tell Thanks for this. Um, that for me, it was actually not stepping down. And we talked with Michaela as well about this, that it's actually a like a step aside kind of thing, just to get the base and, and build kind of a stronger foundation on that. So just to learn more and maybe go back and, and learn things that I didn't learn the first time. And now with the, with the view, uh, being as a manager, I can see, like I obviously had things that I want the employees that work for me do. So now I can be the employee that implement this as well into a into a into a system, and also helping other people that you work with to achieve this. So I think it's definitely a um, in the under the right circumstance. I think it's definitely a thing that could really benefit. Um, could I ask one more? Yes. Right? Um, so you talked about earlier the opportunity and demanding. Um, so from point of view, if I sit down, but then I said to What's the best way to kind of approach your kind of lead team to kind of ask for more time, maybe in head office training and things like that? Or like, is there a best way to kind of approach them and ask for that? Uh, I think that it depends on it depends on the place that you work for, in general. And I've always had a very hard time with this um, asking for for things that I want to do. But I think just being completely honest in what you want to do. And um, you know, if you want to have like more time in training, or I think that's a that's a thing that every employee would would love to hear from their employees that they want to do more stuff. So they should they should really help you to to think of a way how we can do this more, or at least have a discussion about it. Because from as I said, from my experience, I've I've kept quiet for a couple of times, and I've been really uh, heartbroken afterwards. But then I realized that I didn't really ask for it. So I think the best way to start is just having this conversation and then going from there. Awesome. Uh, is anybody else wanting to ask a question? All right, middle here. You want to go? Cool. All right. It's all right, we're recording. <laughs> all right, so what, what, what were the best and the worst part of uh, becoming a manager? Like, what was... What do you think was the hardest thing, and what what do you think was the greatest benefit for you? Um, if I would start with the best thing that happened, I think it was the amount of knowledge and different views that I that you get because you look at if you've worked in a place as a barista and then all of a sudden you have to be responsible for some of the operations in the shop that are not connected with the with the, with the coffee side. So it gives you a bit of an overview of the bar. Or the or the company you work for, and there's a lot of learning there. So and and that's most of the times you get a lot of skills out of there as well in terms of not only coffee but like communicating or or leading a team. Um, the hardest part I always think that it's um, feeling the pressure from the people that work kind of under you or like that you work with or your like team that you manage is that. Um, I have an, an issue, I can't like be angry at people. 
and that's a thing that I'm learning, I guess. But um, uh, but I like being. It's hard for me to be very critical. So and and I'm learning how to be, how to give feedback and give criticism where it's needed. So that has been the hardest thing for me because I always want to kind of keep it nice and so everybody's happy, so nobody leaves. But I've I've. I've had to deal with a lot of things, uh, being a manager, and and uh, I think that's one of the biggest challenges for me, and it's also like something that I've really not enjoyed, but I start to enjoy it more and more. So, it's I think it's about how you look at it, and then where you want to go from there. One more from Michaela. Oh, tough question. Get ready. I have many, but <laughs> we can take that private. But I wanted to. Um, because you talk about um, kind of taking the opportunities that arise, but I wanted to to comment and tell the audience that you just didn't take the opportunity that arise, but uh, you also hunted for it. Um, you followed up on it. Um, you said you applied. Um, I didn't answer, so yeah, <laughs> send another email, and then you came to Copenhagen to just to you know show your face, and then you hunted me down also <laughs> in in Budapest. But I mean that. It it's not a. <laughs> it's it's not how it so seems. A, I was Dude. forced to do this. No, but I want to give you the credit because, as a as somebody who's hiring, I hire for the coffee collective at the moment. So, when somebody shows their motivation and their will, um, it's very attractive, um, and it's not just an opportunity that arises, but it's something you you have been hunting for, and you you make sure that you follow up. So that's um, that's cool. And uh, that's a, something that if you want something, you sometimes do need to follow up on it. And maybe then the door opens a after that time. So don't give up. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing that I was also thinking about at that point. Because um, it was, because I was actually, like, I had no other options in my mind, rather other than uh, Coffee Collective. And... and uh, I just felt that I have to nudge it a bit more, so it kind of turned out great. But um, I think in the past I would not, I would not do the the, the follow up usually, and then that's the thing that I've learned as well that you have to really make sure that they do not want you. So in a way, so yeah, it's a it's a a good point actually too to really always follow up with, with everything that you do and then ask for feedback. Even if it's a no, ask why. Ask why not and what can I do to make it better next time. I think it's also very easy for um, us as humans to forget that other people are also humans. So uh, the idea of making yourself seem like a more appealing candidate can take form in things like perseverance and showing that to a to an employee potentially empl um, sorry a potential employer that it's not just about them choosing you it's that you have actually taken the time and in your mind at least you didn't have any other choice it's not that you did not but you actually decided on the coffee collective so um, it's actually understanding that there are other ways of it's not just about the coffee skills obviously your presentation has outlined that but human to human it's the small gestures that also can add to that yeah cool guys well, one more round of applause for our speakers today, guys. <laughs>